Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And making headlines this morning, this fire breaks out at a home west of downtown overnight. We'll have the latest. The number of coronavirus cases spiking in at least 21 states and Puerto Rico. I'm Inez de la in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. Taking a look outside with live can 79 degrees. It's feeling a little different this morning. Mike will let you know what that's all about in just a bit. Yeah, we need to talk about that. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is June 10th. Not only is it breezy out there, you can feel a noticeable change in the humidity outside. Yeah, it, it, I know it's a 79 degrees, but it felt a lot cooler and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, what is this? It kind of feels like September. I know. And uh, Adam Kasky late yesterday was posting as we bring Mike in. Believe it or not, a front was moving yep. through and now it has. And, well, it, we're watching it come through right now because some folks are like, what are you talking about with the drier air? Because it was actually cutting right across town uh, just about a half an hour ago. Really? Yeah. Uh, what, what a slow mover. Yeah, Randolph was still uh, about a half an hour ago. It was still very, very humid. Well, did you and notice the breeze this morning? Oh, yeah. I let my yeah. dogs out oh, yeah. and I was just like, what? Let, let me show on? you because this line, it's very interesting watching this thing come down. First of all, we can actually see the skyline this morning as opposed to yesterday at this time. Temperatures 79, as Sarah mentioned, 81 Pleasanton. We've got some upper 60s in the hill country and we will continue to drop down. So I'm going for about uh, 70 uh, before it's all said and done this morning. Now, here's the what's going on. 77 for a dew point in Pleasanton. Still just ridiculously humid. That was the number just about half an hour, 45 minutes ago at Randolph. Same thing, Stinson and Port SA, but that drier air continues to work its way down to the south. And folks, again, down to the south, Carrizo Springs, Catula, Beville, I mean, you've got just ridiculously high humidity, but the winds are shifting around and it's pushing that dry air in here. So the dry air will continue to move on down to the south. And so everybody will eventually enjoy it. But again, some folks are kind of going, nah, it's not drying out yet, but just wait. Now there are still some uh, leftover thunderstorms well down to the south, uh, just to the southwest of Beeville. And those will continue to work their way down to the south. And you can see that line right there as this loops back in. That's the dry line moving on through and uh, mold, by the way, grass and pigweed are all on the low side. Get ready for some fantastic weather. 85 degrees today at noon. We got a couple of clouds left over this morning, then plenty of sunshine later on today. 93 for a high temperature breezier this morning. Winds will ease up a little bit. And again, the, the best news is the icing on the cake. This is going to last for a long time. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Nick Salise. Anything going on, sir? Uh, not much right now, Mike. Well, good morning, everyone. Hope you're having a great start to your Wednesday morning. Right now, just a little bit of construction on I-10. That's about it. No accidents to report. Things are looking good right now out there. Let's take a look at this construction. This is westbound I-10. Now, right now, the westbound main lanes of I-10 from Dominion Drive to Bernie Stage Road are closed. You have to exit Dominion Drive and head on that access road, that westbound access road. I don't know how long this is going to be there. Hopefully, it gets cleared up by 8 a.m. Let's take a look at some drive times. If you're 1604 eastbound from the Halotus area to Randolph Air Force Base, it's 27 minutes. And back westbound from Randolph Air Force Base to the Halotus area, 28 minutes. So really good times there. Take a look at uh, the Trans Guide 37 in Houston looking good right now. Um, very smooth all over the city and that's good news for everybody. Well, Mark, Sarah, back to you. Now to the latest on a structure fire that happened west of downtown overnight. San Antonio Fire Department says it was an abandoned home that caught fire. Take a look at this video. Call came in just before 1015 last night near West Martin and Frio. Heavy fire could be seen on the second floor. Firefighters were able to get it all knocked down. No injuries were reported and so far a cause has not been released. In Leon Valley, an arrest is made more than a year later. Police say 78-year-old 78, 78 Olin Yarnell is accused of grabbing a Leon Valley councilwoman. He is charged with simple assault of the elderly. Police say he is accused of grabbing Monica Alcocer during a council meeting, then telling her, quote, I need to talk to you about being nice, end quote. Court records show a warrant was issued for Yarnell's arrest in late March. Officials have not said why it took more than two months for him to be taken into custody. Much of our nation has reopened, but the pandemic is not over. This, this morning, the number of coronavirus cases is spiking now in several states. ABC's Enos de la Quatera is in Washington with the latest. Overnight, a new warning. We need to really be um, socially responsible when we go outside socially distance. You know, I think there's evidence that we're not doing that. 
The nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, comparing the pandemic to his worst nightmare, telling Yahoo News. In a period of four months, it has devastated the world and it isn't over yet. 21 states and Puerto Rico registering a rise in COVID-19 cases and 14 states, including Arizona, have seen their highest seven-day average growth since the pandemic began. Those growth numbers could be attributed to more testing, but several states are also seeing an uptick in hospitalizations. If we continue at at, at a rate like this, we're facing a significant chance that we're going to have to shut down the state again. Hospitalizations are on the rise in these eight states. Doctors say the increases are related to reopening and a lack of social distancing. In Texas alone, hospitalizations are up 36 percent since Memorial Day. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization clarifying its statement on asymptomatic spread, saying it's very rare for people who tested positive but never developed symptoms to infect others. This does not refer to pre-symptomatic patients who just haven't shown signs yet. Members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force have also warned of a possible spike in infections due to the recent nationwide protests. And some members of the D.C. National Guard have already tested positive for COVID-19 in the wake of the mass protests across the nation's capital last week. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Seeing a rise in coronavirus-related deaths this morning. Bear County now reporting 80 people have died from COVID-19. That's an increase of two since the last report. We now have 3,513 cases confirmed, an increase of 180. More than 2,000 people have recovered. 107 people are still in the hospital. Metro Health is responding to conflicting information put out by the World Health Organization on the asymptomatic spread of COVID-19. On Monday, an official with the WHO suggested that asymptomatic people only rarely spread COVID-19. The WHO official clarified the statement on Tuesday and said it was referring to very few studies. San Antonio Metro Health's director talked to us about the conflicting information. We haven't changed our position on asymptomatic, which is that we don't know what the prevalence is in our community. That's why we are doing that door-to-door random study. And um, we'll continue to proceed that with that direction and those assumptions, um, regardless of the WHO statement. Bear County has classified 701 of its COVID-19 cases as asymptomatic. Right now we are at 437, 79 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on a case of two siblings who've been missing in Idaho since last fall and the arrest of the children's stepfather. Now the FCC is cracking down on a company from Texas accused of making a billion robocalls to people across the nation. Take a look outside with live cam like Mike had talked about earlier. A front is moving in and still moving in through our city. Open your door and you will feel that humidity is gone. We'll talk more about that when we come back. In your morning headlines, the U.S. government is launching a pilot program to help reduce the availability of unapproved opioids online. The Food and Drug Administration is among those working with several Internet registries to solve the problem. This is how the program works. The FDA sends a warning letter to websites that are selling illicit opioids online. If the agency doesn't get a response back quickly, they will inform participating Internet registries who will then review and assess whether to take further action. Those actions include possible domain name suspensions or blocks. After 120 days, the agencies will look at whether it has helped curb those illegal sales. The Federal Communications Commission wants the operators of robocall scams to know their numbers are up. The FCC pushing to fine a Texas-based company a record-breaking $225 million. The FCC accusing Rising Eagle of spamming consumers in more than half a dozen states. According to officials, the company made a billion unwanted robocalls in just the first half of 2019. The agency says one of the men behind the company targeted numbers on the do not call list because he believed it was more profitable. Attorneys General for seven states have also filed suit against the company, plus a second company and two men who are supposedly behind both of them. 
Spurs practice facility is now open for business. Players and staff started reporting Monday to the headquarters of on Spurs Lane, but not without restrictions. The NBA officially allowed teams to return to their headquarters last month, but the Spurs decided to wait till June 8th. Players have arrived at scheduled times and they have to be screened for coronavirus before entering the Spurs facility. Good to see him back. 442, 79 degrees. Still ahead, do you have what it takes to become a Jedi Master? Yes. We'll have more details on a new Star Wars TV game show. Ready, you say? <laughs> and now that more people are staying inside because of the heat, many are starting to spend more on new tech items, but that price can add up quickly. We have some easy ways to curb your tech spending. Welcome back. Police have arrested the stepfather of two Idaho siblings missing since last fall. Chad Daybell was taken into custody after investigators said they found human remains on his property. ABC's Deborah Roberts has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, under arrest. Detectives and investigators have uh, recovered what's believed to be human remains uh, that have not been identified at this time. Chad Daybell behind bars, just like wife Lori Vallow, whose children, Tylee and JJ, have been missing for months. Local authorities, along with the FBI, searching Daybell's Idaho property Tuesday, saying they made a grim discovery. From the beginning, questions have swirled about Vallow and Daybell's alleged involvement in her children's disappearance, while a string of deaths surrounded their relationship. The couple, who met while both married to other people, wed last November in Hawaii, just days after Daybell's wife Tammy suddenly died and coming up at 7 a.m. we'll have the very latest on this developing story. With your GMA First Look, I'm Deborah Roberts, ABC News, New York. If you're spending more time at home and there's a good chance you are, there's a also a good chance you're spending more money on tech. Things like streaming media, music subscriptions, or even a new computer can add up fast. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris looks at ways to tame the tech spending. Does your tech budget need a trim? Last year, even before so much home time, people spent an average $640 on subscriptions. Everything from cloud storage to music to dating apps. For Jenny Mary Wyka, it was video streaming services. We currently subscribe to Netflix, Amazon Prime, uh, Disney Plus. And that adds up. So she's looking for ways to save. Our budget has to change. So where do you start? Consumer Report says take inventory. If you're still paying for an app or service but don't really use it, get rid of it. I found I was paying for insurance on a smartphone that was four years old. I was also paying for DVR that we no longer use because we just stream the shows we want to see. Even with the rising cost of streaming services, cutting the cord could still save you hundreds of dollars a year, depending on what you have now and what you replace it with. You can use an antenna to get free network content and then choose a limited streaming service like Sling that starts at $20 a month. Jenny stuck with cable but still saved by buying her own router instead of paying a monthly rental fee. We've been saving a great deal, so I think that's something that, you know, we're happy we did. If you need more devices, consider refurbished. Brands like Apple, Dell, and Samsung sell refurbished at a lower price. Be sure to get certified pre-owned and a warranty. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I think part of the problem is, and we've talked about this before, is people are starting to suffer from stream fatigue. We want the product, but there are so many options out there for streaming now. It's a little overwhelming. I, the other day, I just like grabbed a book because I, I don't want to have to spend 30 minutes having to decide which right. platform. Nothing and wrong then, with that. You know, I'm sure publishers and bookstores are totally fine with you doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's check traffic right now. It is exactly 4.49, and there's Nick. Yeah, things are looking good right now. If you're headed to work, expect a smooth ride, a lot of green on the screen, so things are looking great. Still dealing with this construction, the westbound I-10 at Dominion. Uh, from Dominion to Bernie Stage, the main lanes of I-10 are closed. You have to exit Dominion uh, to continue on westbound I-10. All right, let's take a look at the trans guy. 10 and 1604 looking good. 1604 tradesman looking better. What else do we have here? Um, it's 37 at Houston looking smooth. And we'll do one more. 281 at Grayson looking good. Thank you, Nick. You know, and sometimes, first of all, if you say, somebody says, hey, watch this show or right. this movie, right. okay, where do I see where, it? And you have to Google is it that first on Netflix? to see 
what streaming service it's on. And then if you just want to say, well, let's find a movie mm -hmm. somehow. And sometimes it's so difficult to look at. Well, here's what shows we recommend. I don't care what you recommend. I want to see what. <laughs> not you. I mean, no, I, right. it, but right. it, it's, it's a like, whole thing. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Make it, you know, just a simple like search type thing. I understand so. your frustration. We're all frustrated. We are just a little bit. <laughs> We're not and, frustrated with the weather. No, it's it's There's pleasant out there, but you are tracking what may be the slowest moving cold front in history. <laughs> hey. It's mid-June and we're getting a cold front. True. <laughs> so let's not uh, look at you know, a gift cold front in the mouth. I just coined that phrase. So. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Okay. Uh, this is what it looked like in behind that front. And, yeah, there are some uh, pretty good uh, places, a couple of thunderstorms that popped up yesterday. And what's interesting is it says not so humid fronts, and which, yes, it did drop down the humidity. What's interesting, it dropped the humidity down and then it came back up overnight and then it's continuing to drop down so we can actually see and notice how the camera is shaking that's because of the wind we can actually see the skyline this morning 79 in town 75 Bulverde, and then we've got upper 60s in the hill country and some 80s down to the south and this is what is making all the difference in the world we've got this extremely humid air well down to the south and these numbers have been dropping by 30, close to 35 degrees, the, the dew point temperatures have. So we've gone from mid to even upper 70s, which is still the case in uh, Pleasanton, and continue to drop down into the 40s. And there's even dew points that are down in the 30s out in portions of the hill country, which means it's bone dry air, especially compared to uh, yesterday. The wind has shifted around out of the northeast, uh, nine miles here in town, 18 New Braunfels. But we do have some wind gusts up to 24 at, at the airport, 30 in New Braunfels, and it's going to be breezy in the first portion of the day, and then the winds are going to continue to subside. So we still have some of the uh, showers, even a couple of thunderstorms down to the south. That will all move on out of here and going over the next couple of days, nothing, just uh, clear skies. So some good stargazing weather. Temperatures in the morning hours are going to be below normal. Now it still puts us in the upper 60s, but that's still very pleasant, especially for this time of year when the normal low temperature is right around 72 degrees. And the great thing is this dry air that's the the magic number 60 you get above that you feel it of course yesterday and even this morning some areas have been well up into the 70s for dew points which is tropical rainforest here but that's going to stick around through the weekend and then yeah it's not going to last forever humidity is going to start to come back up a bit as we go in toward the middle of next week but this is one of the nicest stretches of weather that we've had around here in a long time again given the fact that it is june and we usually do keep humidity around here. 85 degrees today at noon. Sunny skies, northeasterly wind, still kind of breezy at uh, 15, 20 miles per hour. We will have some of those gusts around this morning. And then 93 for a high temperature later on today. Normal high, 92, right where it should be. And winds will ease up a little bit. Dry air out there. A beautiful, beautiful evening tonight. And then tomorrow we do it all over again. And look at some of these low temperatures. Again, mid and some upper 60s getting up into the 90 mid 90s and that'll be the case through the weekend and low humidity across the board so nice hallelujah hallelujah yes thank you mike 453 79 degrees up next do you have what it takes to be a jedi we'll tell you about a new star wars game show that will test young padawan's strength knowledge and bravery Four cast members of the reality show Vanderpump Rules are out of a job. Bravo TV says Stassi Schroeder, Kristen Dowdy, Max Boyens, and Brat Caprioni would not return after past race-related comments surfaced. All four have since apologized. The show follows the lives of current and previous employees of former Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star Lisa Vanderpump. Do you have what it takes to be a Jedi? A new game show airing online will test young Padawan's strength, knowledge, and bravery. The 10-part series, Star Wars Jedi Temple Challenge, hosted by Jar Jar Binks actor Ahmed Best, is available on StarWarsKids.com and the Star Wars Kids YouTube channel. 99 years, Prince Philip celebrating a big birthday. He plans on enjoying a quiet lunch at Windsor Castle, where the senior royals have been sheltering due to the coronavirus. The Duke of Edinburgh was born on the island of Corfu in 1921 and later renounced his Greek title before marrying the future Queen Elizabeth. And speaking of birthdays, happy birthday, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Hurley. The British actress and model turns 55. Model Kate Upton is 28. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Romina Puga, ABC News. 457, 78 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour in the wake of George Floyd's death, some Republican lawmakers are looking to draft a police reform bill. Live from Case at 12.
Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, police respond to a shootout at, on the northeast side overnight. Details just ahead. Changes in Washington as legislation is considered regarding police reform. And we've seen some changes to the humidity overnight due to a cool front. Mike Oster Hage has the very latest. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, June 10th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. And if you opened your door yet this morning, or if you haven't, most of y'all are probably still in bed, but right. It's a little nicer. And it's possible the door could get away from you. It's kind of breezy out there, Mike Osterhage. Yes, and it is going to be breezy in the first portion of the day, especially, and then winds are going to be uh, easing up later on. Now, some folks still, the dry air hasn't moved on in, and it was interesting this morning watching this dry air work its way across, because when I left the house right around 3 o'clock, it was still was like, okay, it's a little bit better, but that dry air is continuing to move on in here, and temperatures, we've got some 60s in parts of the hill country as of right now. Look at that top number 43 at this time yesterday. It was about 73, so we've dropped 30 degrees or even more so as far as dew points are concerned and the wind is out of the north northeast and it is gusting as well. Good visibility as of right now. So look at some of the temperatures. First of all, this map and now look at this map of Pleasanton. You have finally dropped down with your dew point down to 54 because just last what 10 minutes ago when last time we did weather it was still about uh, in the 70s and so that dry air continues to push on in here that line that was cutting right across town so at one point we had the 43 here in town and Randolph was still up in the 70s and that's still the case and these are the, the measure moisture in the atmosphere of these dew points so 70 Carrizo Springs 80 in Beeville but the dry air will continue again to push down to the south wind is uh, well at times gusting about 25 close to 30 miles per hour. So like I said, that'll be the case this morning and it's going to be easing up. Mold, grass, pigweed are all on the low side. Partly cloudy, breezy this morning and then sunny, not too hot. Actually a normal high temperature, low 90s and low humidity and so on tomorrow and so on through the weekend. So it's going to continue for the next couple of days. Pleasant mornings, nice afternoon, seasonally warm, but humidity is going to be very, very tolerable. So boy, just enjoy this weather. Make some outdoor plans. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Nick Solis. Anything going on, sir? Not right now, Mike. Things are looking good out there. If you're headed to work, expect a smooth ride. A lot of green on the screen, no accidents. And it looks like that construction may be cleared up on I-10, but I'm not going to call it yet. So we have this here. It looks like I don't see any more uh, units there. However, just be prepared. If you are going westbound on I-10, you're going to have to exit Dominion Drive as Bernie Stage Road at I-10 is shut down. Hopefully it gets cleared up very soon. Look at these drive times. Eastbound 151 to 1604 to 99 minutes. And if you're 90 eastbound to 1604 to 35, it's 11 minutes, so really good times there. All right, taking a look outside of the trans guy, 281 at Grayson looking good, 37 at I-10, three cars on the roadway, that's looking good, 281 and 410 over there where I work, looking great, and let's do one more, 35 and Ben Zingelman, running smooth. Well, everyone, just make sure to wear your seatbelt, go the speed limit, and get to work safely. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. New this morning, San Antonio police respond to a shootout overnight on the northeast side. Happened just before 11 p.m. in the 5200 block of Round Table Drive. That's just west of Ed White Middle School. Police say a man in his 20s had just arrived at his grandparents' house when another man in a gray vehicle pulled up, got out, and started shooting. Police say the victim was hit in the leg, but then returned fire, possibly hitting the suspect in the process. The victim was taken to the hospital. So far, there is no information from police on any arrests. Well, just hours after George Floyd's funeral, lawmakers are now considering ways to reform police procedures. ABC's Ines Oloterra has the details. This morning, a statue of Christopher Columbus sitting at the bottom of a lake. As George Floyd's death sparks a new movement, the removal of what some say are symbols of racism. A crowd in Richmond, Virginia, knocking the statue down, dragging it from a park and throwing it into the water. Nearby, a stalemate over this monument to Robert E. Lee. The governor wants it gone, but a judge has now issued an injunction against its removal. And NASCAR driver Bubba Wallace now calling for Confederate flags to be removed from racetracks. No one should feel uncomfortable when, they're, when they come to a NASCAR race. So it starts with Confederate flags. Get them out of here. They have no place for them. It follows an emotional final farewell for George Floyd Tuesday. I believe, I believe that a change is going to come. 
Friends, family members, politicians, and celebrities packing a church in Houston. I want justice for my brother, my big brother. His death in police custody in Minneapolis is sparking a global outcry over police brutality and racial prejudice. Just hours after the funeral, the district attorney's office announced it's dropping charges against nearly 800 protesters in Houston. On Capitol Hill, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell asking Tim Scott, the chamber's only black Republican, to draft a police reform bill. I've asked Senator Tim Scott to lead a group that is working on a proposal to allow us to respond Uh, to the obvious uh, racial discrimination that we've seen on full display on our television screens over the last two weeks. And when it comes to the Confederate flag, another development this morning. The U.S. Navy is now planning to ban the flag from all public spaces on ships and aircraft. Inez de Liquitera, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, protesters are demanding the Bear County District Attorney's Office to reopen three cases involving men who were shot by San Antonio police. Those men include Marquise Jones, Charles Roundtree, and Antoine Scott. District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says there was not enough evidence to reopen those cases. During the protest, one person spent her time getting people registered to vote. It's more important now than ever because if we want to see real actionable change, we have to start with the local, to the people locally who are making decisions for our everyday life. There is a reason why people fought so hard to keep us from voting. People literally died for people's right to vote. The deadline to register to vote is less than a week away. You have until Monday, June 15th to make sure you're registered for the runoff scheduled for July. For more information, visit our website, kset.com. San Antonio is opening up some cooling centers a little earlier than planned. City officials say the coronavirus has left people with fewer options to seek shelter from the heat, so they opened up six out of the 10 centers. And here's a list of the ones that will be open today. These libraries will be open from 11, uh, rather 10 a.m. through 5 p.m. through Saturday. City says those seeking relief from the heat will be allowed to sit in designated areas and use Wi-Fi on their own devices, but computer use is still restricted. More cooling centers will be opening up uh, next week, as well as outdoor pools and splash pads starting July 3rd. We have a full schedule on KSAT.com. Well, a day of playing in the puddles turned into a rescue for Bernie family. Firefighters are praising three-year-old Miles Butry for his quick thinking after his sister and dad were pulled in uh, by high water back on May 12th. During the incident, Miles ran home and told his mom what happened. Firefighters quickly arrived and were able to pull them out about 15 feet underground where they were caught in a culvert. Somehow he was able to stop himself in the chute and there was a little bit of a standing platform that was covered by water that they were able to stand on. The father says he kept one foot in the water to catch his son. In case he fell in two, he says they sang worship songs while they waited to be rescued. The fire department urges parents to talk to their kids about emergencies and teach them things like their name, address, and phone number. You can read more about this story on KSAT.com. 508, 78 degrees. And next, the movies. More movies are getting ready to open up again. We'll tell you when theaters near you will be welcoming back customers. Outside with live cam, latest on that cool front. Moving through the area as we speak. Some relief from the heat. Mike has details straight ahead. Welcome back. In your morning consumer headlines, the largest movie theater owner in the world is getting ready to reopen its doors. AMC Theaters says movie fans will be able to see films on the big screen starting next month. The chain's locations have been shut down since March 17th due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Movie theaters are among the businesses hit hard by COVID-19. Last week, AMC released a statement saying they had substantial doubts about being able to stay afloat. The company had a net loss of more than $2 billion during the first quarter. Craving double stuff Oreos or flaming Hot Cheetos but can't seem to find them at the store? Well, there's a reason for that. Experts say food manufacturers have cut back production on more unique food items in order to meet demand for traditional items. When stay-at-home orders went into effect, companies like General Mills, Pepsi, Coke, 
and Campbell's saw a massive spike in demand for some of their core products. And that means fewer varieties of Jif peanut butter, Oreo cooker, cookies, rather, and Frito-Lay chips are available at grocery stores. Analysts say companies will likely go back to producing a wider variety of items very soon. Well, Macy's has secured about $4.5 billion of financing to help repay its debt. This includes $1.3 billion that had previously raised through a debt offering. Experts say this means Macy's is, no, is now no longer at risk of bankruptcy. The retailer closed all of its stores when lockdown started because of the coronavirus. Some stores have started to reopen. But even before the pandemic, Macy's was struggling amid changing shopping habits. It remains to be seen what's going to happen. So many malls were struggling before all of this hit, too. I know. Right now, we're at 513, 78 degrees. Still had more than 30 million adults in the U.S. cannot read, write, or do basic math. We'll tell you about one woman who came up with the first of its kind idea to come back to combat illiteracy. Her story is next. Welcome back. According to the U.S. Department of Education and the National Institute of Literacy, more than 30 million adults in the U.S. can't read. Another study shows that about half of adult Americans can't read past the eighth grade level. The woman you're about to meet is a law school graduate and a startup entrepreneur. And as Max Massey reports, she's trying to change those statistics and is using her talents to help others succeed. For the year 2050, I believe that will be change. When adult learner H.C. Warfield retired, he decided to go back to school, learn something he never was able to do before. When I came here, I couldn't read at all. Warfield is one of thousands of adults and children learners who benefit from a first-of-its-kind literacy collaboration called Chicago Literacy Alliance. My reading is getting um, really good. I hope people... Like having a great big extended professional family in one place, like a great big nonprofit family reunion for literacy. With her experience in the venture capital world, Ratner uses her expertise to build support for the idea that if literacy groups work together, their reach can be vast. No one is going to be motivated or inspired or drawn to a group which is just doing a few little projects in isolation. Instead, Chicago Literacy Alliance has a home base where more than 120 literacy groups can rent workspaces, use resources, and collaborate with one another. Christine Kenny is the executive director of Literacy works, which trains more than 600 volunteer tutors for adult learners. Being close to other organizations working towards the same mission has been a huge advantage for her. Find out more about what they're doing, see if there's ways to partner. And for people who are learning to read for the first time, this collaboration for literacy? Oh, it gonna mean a whole lot. Not only to him, but also to the millions of people struggling with illiteracy. The Chicago Literacy Alliance started with only 17 groups, but they've grown to more than 120. And they've been so successful, they earned the Best Practice Award from the Library of Congress. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Well, we know it's awfully early, but some folks have to hit the road. Nick? Well, well hello, yeah. yeah well, hi. Well, well, <laughs> Well, yeah, if you are hitting the road right now, expect a smooth ride. We have one minor accident that's going to be on southbound IH-35 North near Northeast Loop 410. It looks like this accident uh, has been there for about 15 minutes and a wrecker is on scene, so hopefully it gets cleared up very soon. All right, taking a look outside at the Trans Guy 281 and Winding Way, running very smooth right now. 410 and Austin Highway looking good there. What else we got here? West Avenue looking good. 10 and Callahan East looking better. And uh, one more, 10 at Frio, inbounds and outbounds, running smooth. Thank you, Nick. Boy, talk about some vibrant yeah. colors, Mike. Yeah, all the plants look fantastic nowadays, uh, but you're going to have to start watering because we've noticed that on the back deck where things mm -hmm. are going to trouble a little bit, so we're not going to have quite as intense heat, but we don't have any rain anywhere in the forecast. So that's one thing, kind of the downside, if you will, from this forecast. Okay. But on the plus side, though, I mean, it feels nice out there. Great uh, sunflowers, by the way. Thank you so very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right, we can actually see the skyline as opposed to yesterday, but notice how this camera is kind of jiggling a little bit because it is fairly breezy out there. 79 Porta say 80 Casterville. Now, we still have very warm temperatures. Normal low is 72, but there is some... Uh, Somewhat cooler air, obviously. Bernie stage 70s, 60s in the Hill Country. And this will continue to move on in here. Balverde's at 75 right now. And these are the numbers that make all the difference. And actually, 
this morning uh, at one point when I came into work it was still fairly fairly kind of humid, but then the humidity really dropped down even within an hour with the dew point temperatures dropping. But at one point we we're still at 43 in town and Randolph and Port SA still had dew points up in the mid and upper 70s, about 77 degrees. But that dry air continues to work its way down to the south. Beeville still has plenty of humidity, Catula, but look at this, Gonzales, Pleasanton, everything is drying out. So this, all the wind coming in here out of the northeast will push that drier air into the area. And uh, about 10, 15, 20 mile per hour winds, then we've got the gusts on top of that. So Pleasanton, 22, 26 Laredo. That, though, may be from a couple of thunderstorms down there around Laredo and 20 mile per hour wind gusts here in town. So it will be breezier this morning, and then the wind is going to be easing somewhat later on today. So great news and then better news. The icing on the cake, if you will, is the fact that these dew points will stay below that threshold number of 60 through the weekend, which means comfortable air. So in the afternoon, you get in the shade and it's going to be really nice. And in the mornings, it's going to be very pleasant with temperatures in the 60s and just fantastic. So we did have some of those uh, showers and a couple of thunderstorms that popped up, tried to pop up along that front as it moved on through. Now we still have some clouds hanging around in here, but the drier air will continue to sort of move on in or drier air aloft will move on in here uh, in the upstairs of the atmosphere throughout the day. So plenty of sunshine. So the uh, kind of the G whiz around the country. First of all, upstream from us, not much is going on, but this is actually the remnants of what was Tropical Storm Cristobal, and that's uh, working its way through the Great Lakes. And it's very rare to have a storm from the Gulf go all the way up, basically shot up the Mississippi River all the way in toward the, uh, the Great Lakes and dumped a fair amount of rain on them today. Beautiful day. We've got some clouds hanging around here this morning. We will see more sunshine throughout the day. 85 degrees at noon and breezier this morning than the wind is going to ease somewhat later on today. 93 this afternoon. Normal high 92 right where we should be. Low humidity. Really nice. Good stargazing weather tonight and then tomorrow we do it all over again. Actually a little bit cooler in the morning down mid 60s the next couple of mornings. I'm not going to say jacket weather, but mid 60s. <laughs> that's that's really nice. That's jacket and, weather for me. Okay, well, okay, Cold some nature. folks, and in, in the hill country, it'll be cooler, and then it stays very, very nice throughout the weekend. Fantastic. Thank you, Mike. 522, 78 degrees. Up next, Bill and Ted are facing the music in their newest movie. We'll take a look at the trailer in your morning spotlight. Pick three numbers: seven three zero Fireball one. Daily four numbers: nine four six three Fireball three. Catch five one three ten eighteen twenty three. And the Mega Millions one five nine ten twenty three. Powerball twenty two with Mega Player at two. Five twenty five. Plenty of movie and music news today, including a brand new trailer for the latest Bill and Ted movie. CNN's David Daniel has the details in this Hollywood Minute. Bill and Ted, what have you got to say for yourselves? Be excellent to each other and party on, dudes. Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter reunite in the first teaser trailer for Bill and Ted Face the Music. The now middle-aged pals are running out of time to write the song that'll save the world. The long-awaited third Bill and Ted movie is due in theaters August 21st. Theater number two, second one up the stairs, guys. AMC Theaters has announced it lost $2.2 billion in the year's first quarter due to the global shutdown over COVID-19. As it tries to avoid bankruptcy, the company says it's preparing to reopen theaters around the world in July. Warner Brothers Tenet is scheduled to debut in theaters July 17th, with Disney's Mulan following July 24th. This is beyond my wildest dreams. Lionel Richie is getting into the film biz. The music legend is working with Disney to turn his songbook into a movie musical. It would be an original story built around the songs, like Mamma Mia or Across the Universe, rather than a biopic. The working title, All Night Long. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
Okay, for me, I think Keanu Reeves seemed a little awkward in some of those scenes. He's like, I can't, it's almost like he's like, I can't believe I'm doing another Bill and Ted movie. I'm John Wick, for God's sakes. No, but I know, but he, I think he's hilarious. No, I think he should good. just stick to those he, comedy roles. He's got great comedic timing. Right now, 526, 78 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, a look at how new technology could be used to solve a San Antonio murder case that's gone unsolved since 1991. U.S. Senate preparing a proposal for police reform. We have a closer look at changes being suggested by Senate Republicans. Rise and shine. It is Wednesday, June 10th. Thank you so much for being with us. And it is nice and cool. Well, I don't want to say cool. It's 78 degrees outside, but I'll take it over the 97, 98 temps that we've been having. Feels a little bit more comfortable out there, Mike Oster H. Yeah, because that humidity has dropped down. We finally got that front to move on through here. It was, uh, it was taking its time, and it was about, um, say, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, at least as it was moving through town, and it continues to work its way down to the south. 78 in town, 70 uh, Bernie stage, 68 up the road in comfort. And these are the numbers that make all the difference. Just to compare to yesterday, we had dew points that were up in the mid 70s on average, and now we are in the mid and even lower 40s. Uh, 38 for a dew point there in Lost Maple, so that's just absolutely wonderful, wonderful air. And this drier air will continue to work its way to the south. So Pleasanton just. Again, about an hour or so ago, you still had a dew point up to 77. It has now dropped down. Still just miserably high humidity down here to the south around Beeville, Victoria. You will be seeing this drier air coming in here on the wind out of the northeast. That's kind of breezy at times, about 15, 20 mile per hour winds. Then we do have some gusts at uh, 22 in Pleasanton, 20 in San Antonio. Last hour, the wind was gusting close to 30 miles per hour in New Braunfels. Mold, grass, and pigweed are all on the low side and throughout the rest of today, 85 at noon, 93 for a high temperature. Normal high is 92, low humidity. Great looking forecast, and it's gonna be sticking around. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic, here's Officer Nick Solis. What's going on, Nick? Not much right now, Mike. Just working on one accident. That's going to be this accident here. It's going to be southbound IH 35 North at the intersection of Northeast Loop 410 or that on ramp to Northeast Loop 410. This accident should be cleared now. I know last time I checked, the record was on scene. So I, I think it should be getting cleared up here pretty soon and won't affect your morning commute. All right, drive times 35 southbound from the northeast side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes. And if you're on 35 northbound from the southwest side of 1604 to downtown, 12 minutes as well. So really good times. All right, outside looking great right now. Look at 10 West and 1604 in the northwest side. Very little cars. 1604 at Tradesman down the road there looking good. And uh, let's see what else we have here. 37 in Houston on the southeast side looking great. All right, everyone will please have a wonderful and safe morning. Mark, Sarah, back to you. There's been tension in much of the U.S. since George Floyd was killed two weeks ago in police custody. Since then, there have been demonstrations across the country calling for change. But as CNN's John Lawrence reports, a possible step in, is under consideration now in the Senate. We don't want no more police. After two weeks of widespread protests, Republican senators are preparing a proposal for police reform. What we've been talking about <clears throat> uh, here in the Senate Republican Conference is what we think is the appropriate response to the events of the last few weeks. Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina unveiled a draft of the proposal, which includes greater accountability for no-knock warrants and uses of force. What do we want? Justice! What do we want now? The Scott plan release coinciding with George Floyd's funeral in Houston. It is very unfortunate that his death was the catalyst for talks that needed to happen a very long time ago. Since Floyd's killing while in custody of Minneapolis police, some protesters are calling for police departments to be defunded and dissolved with their funding redistributed to community programs. And while there is general agreement that action is needed, some say a dismantling of law enforcement groups could be dangerous, especially with domestic disturbances. You think that you're going to send somebody there without the required equipment to protect themselves and the innocent person that they're responding to help, that's folly. Senator Scott is part of the five-person task force that will work on turning the draft into legislation. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, workers at Twitter and Square are getting a new holiday. The CEO of both companies announced that they will be adding Juneteenth 
As a company holiday, Juneteenth is June 19th. The day commemorates the freeing of slaves in Texas in 1865. The decision comes as protests take place across the country, sparked by the death of George Floyd. The company CEO called Juneteenth a day of celebration, education and connection. And for the first time, an African-American will serve as a service chief in the U.S. military, and he is a San Antonio native. U.S. Senate unanimously confirmed General Charles Q. Brown Jr. as chief of staff for the United States Air Force. Brown says his nomination provides hope. It also comes with a heavy burden, but he says he'll work to, quote, make improvements so that airmen both today and tomorrow appreciate the value of diversity, end quote. Well, we have some late breaking news and our, Katri our Katrina Weber, she is live at the police station with more Katrina. Well, good morning. Actually, I'm out here on the northwest side where police have had a pretty tense situation going on. Uh, we are at the trailhead for the Leon Creek Greenway, and police have a man in custody here. Now, this started with a, a situation in a neighborhood not far from here. Police had a house surrounded. They had the neighborhood closed off. We heard them talking about a man possibly armed who they thought initially was in the house. We are still waiting for police to give us an official uh, statement on what has been going on. But we had heard that they were looking for someone who was armed, who they thought was in that house. And then they began searching this area. They had the helicopter overhead. They were down on that, uh, on that greenway. And then they came out with this man who they now have here in custody. Paramedics showed up here a little while ago. They were checking this man out, and then uh, police have been here ever since. And again, they're not, uh, they haven't told us yet what's been going on, but there was some talk that they were looking for a man who was armed with a rifle, and uh, this is the man who they have in custody now. So we hope that once they're done uh, taking him into custody, into that car, that we'll be able to get some more information and then bring that to you. Reporting live uh, on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Obviously, a still developing situation. There's so much that we don't even know about this. So we're going to get back with Katrina a little bit more uh, later on. Right now, 536, 78 degrees. Still ahead, President Trump is commenting about an elderly protester who was pushed by police in Buffalo. And I'll tell you about a San Antonio murder case that has gone unsolved since 1991 and how some new technology may be the key to solving it. Taking a look outside with live cam at 78 degrees and... If you open up your door this morning, not as muggy, Mike will tell you why when we come back. Well, there are dozens of cold cases in San Antonio, and one of those is a 1990 murder of 35-year-old Antoinette Jordan. That case was never solved, and it's featured in this week's South Texas Crime Story. Eric Hernandez tells us how police are hoping new technology can help solve the crime. She was a mother of eight kids who was brutally raped and murdered on May 26, 1990. Antoinette Jordan was found under the North Walter Street Bridge by a passerby walking and noticed her lying face up under the bridge. Police say she was shot and the disarray of her clothing suggested sexual assault. The investigation by police suggests that robbery was not a motive. Jordan's jewelry and personal items had not been taken, but police did say they believe she may have known her killer. With no witnesses, this case went cold, but 30 years later, new technology is giving police hope. 540 it, right now, 78 degrees. Well, backlash at the White House after President Trump tweets a response to an elderly protester who was pushed to the ground by police. The latest on President Trump commenting about an elderly protester badly injured after he was pushed by two police officers. The protester's friends are now coming to his defense after President Trump suggested he may have been faking the fall. ABC's Kenneth Moten has that story. This morning, friends of an elderly protester pushed by police in Buffalo are expressing outrage at President Trump. Absolutely absurd. And I think that it's actually um, a detraction and a deflection for what's really happening in this moment. While the nation mourned George Floyd and protests for police reform persist across the country, the president shared a conspiracy theory about Martin Gugino. <laughs> The 75-year-old protester seen on video falling to the ground after being shoved by two officers. 
Trump tweeted Gugino could be an Antifa provocateur, claiming he appeared to scan police communications in order to black out the equipment, adding, I watched. He fell harder than was pushed, was aiming scanner. Could be a setup. The president was citing a report by the right-wing TV network One America News. Gugino's friends say he's a devout Catholic and a peace activist. To know him, he is a very gentle, very sweet, very funny, soft-spoken man. Um, and it just, it was for us just, I think, a really big shock. Lawyers for Gugino called the president's tweet dark, dangerous, and untrue. The claim sparked outcry from New York's governor. What do you think it was? It was staged? You think the blood coming out of his head was staged? Is that what you're saying? How reckless, how irresponsible, how mean, how crude. The White House is not commenting on the backlash. And on Capitol Hill, most Republicans ducked questions. What do you make of the president's tweet this morning? And does the president need to be more cautious about what he tweets? I didn't see it. Um, so I'd have to, I mean, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I'm sure that my office will be able to get me a copy of it, but I, I didn't see it. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. HBO Max has pulled the movie Gone with the Wind as protests continue against racial injustice across the country. A spokesperson for the streaming service says the movie is a product of its time and depicts racial prejudices commonplace in American society. The 1939 film is considered a cinematic classic, but also criticized for its portrayal of slavery and African Americans. HBO Max says it, when it does return, there will be a discussion of the movie's historical context and a denouncement of those racial depictions. Roger Federer is hanging up his racket for the next year and a half. The 20 time Grand Slam champ is having surgery on his right knee. Federer wrote on Twitter that he had to have an additional procedure after having experienced a setback during his initial rehab. The 38 year old whose last Grand Slam title was in 2018 says he plans to return for the 2021 season. Orders to stay home during the pandemic were put in place to slow the spread of COVID-19. And now a new study suggests those measures have worked. CNN's Mandy Gaither has the details. Empty streets, closed business signs, sites Americans won't soon forget. And a new study suggests if we hadn't done all that we did, staying home, closing schools, restricting travel, staying socially distanced from the beginning of the pandemic through early April, there would be about 60 million more coronavirus infections nationwide. The research published in the scientific journal Nature used a modeling technique typically used for estimating economic growth. It measured the effect of shutdown policies in six countries. The study period ended on April 6, but keeping shutdown orders in place after that time has likely led to even more coronavirus infections being avoided, according to the study's lead author. The study included data on daily infection rates, changes in coronavirus case definitions, and timing of large-scale shutdown policies, but it had some limits limitations, including that available data on infections and measures across the country studied were limited and researchers could only suggest estimations about what could have happened. For today's Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Right now it's 547. We're going to check in with Officer Nick with the traffic and it's been a pretty quiet morning. I understand there was an accident earlier in 35 and 410. Yeah, there was one accident, but it, that's about cleared up now. But we do have some heavy buildup here on 410. I don't know what that is because the accident was on 35, so I'll get more information on that. But other than that, things are looking good all around the city. Let's take a look at the trans guide. 10 and 1604 looking good there. Uh, Traffic very light to moderate uh, everywhere at 1604 and Tradesman looking good. It should give me, uh, yeah, 35 in Slotto Creek. Look at that. So th there's something that's going on there on 35 that's that's uh, causing traffic delays. This, I, uh, not construction, I can't find an accident, but uh, I, there's something going on there that I got to get information on. Well, it's sure looking like construction. You connect the dots there for that one scene back to Salado Creek. It looks yep. like it could be I, there. But I we, think so. We know you'll find out. Thank yeah. you very much, Nick. Well, we had some interesting cloud formations around yesterday as things got interesting in the afternoon. Yes, indeed. And before we talk about this beautiful weather, mm -hmm. you know what would make it even better is a big sloppy wet kiss. And we've got the place to get it because you can go out to the San Antonio Humane Society. And here's a look at Vanessa, a one-year-old Chinese shark. Pay mix 
Oh, look at that face. Sweet girl, very shy at first. But once you get to know you, she's going to be your friend. Start bouncing up and down. Tail's going to go 1,000 miles an hour, so watch out. And this is Goldie, one-year-old cat. She is the only cat they know that will play fetch. Huh. She loves her kitty toys and sunbathing. Okay, she came into the shelter with her kittens, but all her kittens have gotten adopted, and now she is hoping to find a very loving home. So don't forget that Swiffer and North Shore Animal League America are partnering with the Humane Society to offer adoption specials. Now through Sunday, Swiffer will cover $50 off the adoption fees for 50 approved adopters. To learn more about this, just go to the website, sahumane.org, located, of course, 4804 Fredericksburg Road. Just outside 410-226-7461 is the number to call for more information. So go on there and, and you can check out all the animals on their website as well. Now we talk about some of those interesting cloud formations Mark was talking about. We've got, yeah, we had a few uh, thunderstorms that did pop up with this. Even in the uh, mid-morning hours yesterday, out to the west, some of those storms started to develop because the atmosphere was just so, so unstable and volatile yesterday. And we had a few as that front moved on through here. Now. We can see, comparing to yesterday, we can actually see downtown from our camera down there at Brook City Base. 78 degrees here in town, 68 now at Bernie Stage. So it has continued to drop down. I think we will continue to drop down in the next couple of hours with temperatures and the humidity. These numbers were up in the 70s, even just a, what is it, 550 right now at 3 o'clock in the morning. These numbers were still up in the 70s, and then that dry air continued to work its way down to the south. So, Beeville, Victoria, Catula, Carrizo Springs, just wait your humidity. As a matter of fact, Carrizo Springs is dropping down right now. Wind is out of the northeast about 10, 15 miles per hour, and then we do have some gusts up to 20 here in town, 18 Pleasanton, as well as in Rock Springs. So it'll be breezier this morning, and then the wind is going to be easing up. So we've got really dry air down here at the surface. However, we still have a lot of moisture upstairs in the atmosphere, and that is sort of uh, equating into some clouds around here. But we will see drier air sliding in here later on today, so that's going to help to get rid of uh, any clouds. So we're going to have some uh, blue sky later on today. The best part or the the extra part to it, I guess you could say the bonus is the fact that the humidity is going to be staying low all the way through the weekend. We'll keep two points below 60. Anytime two points are below 60, that's fantastic, especially this time of year. So here's the showers and some of the thunderstorms that tried to develop along that front late yesterday and then into the overnight hours. Still a few of them well down to the south and upstream. There is just nothing going on as far as we are concerned. The uh, G whiz for this morning is the fact that that is the leftovers of what was Tropical Storm Kosobel, and it has been dumping a bunch of rain up there, even as far north as the Great Lakes going into southern Canada. 85 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, still some clouds left over this morning, mostly sunny and uh, northeasterly wind 15, 20 miles per hour. So it's still going to be kind of breezy even by this afternoon or through noontime, pardon me. And then by this afternoon, the wind is going to be easing up 93 for a high temperature today. Normal high is 92 right where it should be. Low humidity It's going to put a smile on everybody's face. Roll down the windows, folks. And then tomorrow, the morning temperature is 65. Really nice. Mid 90s. Same thing on Friday. Ah, this weekend. Sit outside, a little cup of coffee. Enjoy the sunrise. You're painting quite the picture Listen here. Listen the birds sing. Yes. Sounds like the... Talk in a lower voice. <laughs> Mike will even pick your music for you. I don't know why. Such a romantic. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. 552, 78 degrees. Well, coming up next, the San Antonio Zoo is experiencing a baby boom. We'll tell you all about that, all about the newest animals born during the pandemic. But first, your lottery numbers, your pick three numbers, 730, Fireball 1, daily four numbers, 9463, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 1, 3, 10, 18, 23, and Powerball 1, 5, 9, 10, 23 Powerball 22, Mega Pyre 2.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are live in Houston after that emotional funeral for George Floyd. Hundreds packing the church to celebrate his life. But this is all happening as the calls for police reform grow louder. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a supporter of defunding the police, is live with us only here on GMA. San Antonio Zoo experiencing a quarantine baby boom. They've had a number of new additions born in captivity while the pandemic forced closures. The births include several animals such as twin lemurs. It's been more than 30 years since the zoo's had a birth of a black and white uh, ruffled, I think that's what it is, lemur. Anyway, web team's been keeping track of the pandemic with the latest numbers and many efforts underway to help our community through this trying time. It's all online at ksat.com. It's exactly three minutes till 75 degrees. Still ahead in the next half hour, I'll tell you what Metro Health is saying about conflicting info put out by the World Health Organization regarding the asymptomatic spread of COVID-19. And Officer Nick Salis is here with Time Saver Traffic. That is coming up. The number of coronavirus cases spiking in at least 21 states and Puerto Rico. I'm Inez de Guatera in Washington, and I'll have all the details coming up. And outside with live cam, we've got a front in the area, and you'll notice a change in the air. Mike is standing by with your Wednesday forecast. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It's Wednesday, June 10th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And it's actually a beautiful morning. If you've opened your door yet, not as much humidity and it's breezy out there. Mike Ostrange has more on how the rest of our Wednesday is shaping up. Wonderful. I Good. Mean, yeah, I, there's nothing more to say about it. So I was a little worried when I uh, was heading into work this morning because there was still some humidity hanging around here. This front was really taking its time to move on through and you could just see the dry air that was moving on in here. We can actually see the skyline compared to yesterday. The camera is shaking a little bit because of some of those uh, winds out there. Temperatures dropped now to 75. I think we will drop uh, about going for five more degrees before it's all said and done for low right around 70 actually just a bit below normal this morning 68 uh, up the road Bernie stage and mid 60s in parts of the hill country these are the numbers that make all the difference we've got dew points down in the now averaging about low mid 40s 50 Helotus 38 lost maples but down at the south, this is the air that we were in yesterday with this extremely humid air. But this line has been slowly working its way down to the south all morning long with the wind out of the northeast about 10, 15, 20 miles per hour. And we do still have some wind gusts, 18 at Pleasanton, 30 Labrador, although that might be with a couple of thunderstorms around there and then 17 mile per hour wind gusts. So it'll stay breezier this morning and then wind's going to be uh, easing up later on today. Molds on the low side, same thing with grass and pigweed and temperatures. Again, we dropped down to right around 70 here in town, some 60s in the hill country, and then begin a nice warm up. There's dry air out there, so that's going to warm things up very easily, allow things to warm up easily. 85 degrees today at noon, and then we will top off right around the low 90s, just about normal and again, low humidity. So you couldn't ask for really nicer weather this time of year for the uh, the mid part of June and the icing on the cake. I keep saying is it's going to be sticking around details for the weekend in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now and officer Nick Solis. Uh, what's going on? Well, with not had an accident or construction in Israel from trans guys said it may have been an accident, but it's all cleared up now, Mike. So okay. that's good. If you are headed 35 north right now, that accident and or construction is clear. Things are flowing smoothly from 35 in North New Braunfels past Lotto Creek to Ben Zingelman. Um, so it's still a little red and orange right now, but as the uh, transcribe I'm going to show you here in a little bit. It's looking a little a uh, lot better. All right, drive time 1604 westbound from US 281 to I-10 six minutes. And if you're southbound 281 from Bolverde to 1604 five minutes. So really good times right now if you're headed out to work. All right, 410 in Austin Highway. It's going smooth there. 10 west at four, uh, 1604 looking good. 10 at Callahan East looking really good as well. 10 at Frio inbounds and outbounds looking wonderful. And uh, let's do one more. Hopefully 10 west and 1604 on the northwest side looking great. Well, everyone, I hope you have a wonderful and safe morning. Make sure to buckle that seatbelt too. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. From a northwest side neighborhood into the woods along Leon Creek. That's how far San Antonio police had to go to catch up with an armed man. They say they were worried he might harm himself or someone else. Our Katrina Weber is live where that search ended at the trailhead to the Leon Creek Greenway. That's near Bandera Road. Katrina, what can you tell us? 
Well, I can tell you, we had a chance to talk to police. They say that this man was in the middle of some sort of a mental crisis. He appeared to be having delusions, paranoid delusions. And what really concerned them is that he was armed with a shotgun. This did all end peacefully here, uh, right in this parking lot. This is where police took him into custody, and they say they will have him evaluated. But let me show you what it looked like when they were in the middle of the situation, which for a while was very tense. This started with a phone call from that man's mother around 4 o'clock this This morning, she told them she was concerned about her son. By the time officers got there, they thought that they heard gunshots as they approached the house. They say they also found out that the man had gone over the back fence armed with a shotgun, according to his mother. Police searched the neighborhood looking for him. At some point, they established phone contact with him and realized that he was out on the greenway here, out uh, along Leon Creek. Police put their helicopter in the sky. They were able to see the man, they say, because they talked him into using his cell phone flashlight to signal the helicopter overhead. Police spotted him from the sky, but they still had to maneuver through all the darkness and the wooded area to find that man. They did find him safely. They brought him out of the woods. Uh, They were able to get him to put his gun down. And again, they do have him in custody now, and he will be uh, undergoing a mental evaluation. So no injuries as far as this goes. But police were very concerned for a while. Reporting live uh, on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New this morning, police investigating a shooting on the northeast side. It happened around 11 last night, the 5600 block of Round Table. That's near Mid-Crown and Walsham Roads, just down the street from Ed White Middle School. They say a man in his 20s was walking up to his grandparents' house. That's when a gray vehicle pulled up and someone with a gun jumped out of the passenger seat. Suspect shot the man in his leg. The victim then pulled out a gun and fired back. And police say it likely hit the suspect. They are still searching for the driver and shooter. Right now it is 6.05. The community of Houston reacting this morning following funeral services for George Floyd. Michael Lopardi from our sister station KPRC in Houston has those details. The church allowed people to view the service inside and then allowed them to come together to talk about where we go from here. Not far from the funeral, people celebrated the life of George Floyd with food and music. We're mad, we're angry, of course, but we also know that love conquers hate. The group Color of Change in Bethel's Family Baptist Church in Houston hosted a community repass or gathering after the service. We have to take a stand now and say, listen, we can't sit on the sidelines. Uh, we got to go to the next level to make sure these things stop happening. Walter August Jr. is the senior pastor. He's also a father and grandfather who wants to make sure the movement sparked by Floyd's death doesn't end with his burial. It cannot be the end because the law enforcement, that's one sector uh, of injustice or racism, but it's in all pockets, in all organizations, in all companies. We're not only out here for him, we're out here in a specific movement trying to stop racial injustice. Joel Jackson told me things must change. We are adamant, adamant about making a change, not only in the justice system, but also globally throughout the world. Change is coming, people are coming together, you see more love, and it's gonna continue. But Tansy Houston Rogers says there's still work to be done and justice to be served. The pastor here called Floyd's death a wake up call for the nation and said it's time for the country to deal with these real issues. In Houston, I'm Michael Loparty for KSAT 12 News. Protesters are demanding the Bear County District Attorney's Office reopen three cases involving men who were shot by San Antonio police. Those men include Marquise Jones, Charles Roundtree, and Antoine Scott. Bear County District Attorney Joe Gonzalez says there was not enough evidence to reopen those cases. That has led to activists pushing for more structural change. During the protests, one person spent her time getting people registered to vote. It's more important now than ever because if we want to see real actionable change, we have to start with the the people locally who are making decisions for our everyday life. There is a reason why people fought so hard to keep us from voting. People literally died for people's right to vote. 
The deadline to register less than a week away. You have until Monday, June 15th to make sure you're registered for the runoff schedule for July. For more information, visit our website at ksat.com. Well, streaming now on KSAT TV, meet the activist who is now working daily with the mayor to fight racial injustices. That's Pharaoh Clark. He helped calm protesters at last week's city council meeting. He breaks down what protesters are still calling for in an extended interview, which you can download. You can download the app on Apple TV, Roku, Fire Stick, or smart or any smart TV for this story and more bonus footage and interviews. Much of the nation has reopened, but the pandemic is not over. The number of coronavirus cases spiking in several states. In the state of Texas, for the first time, there are now 2,000 hospitalized virus patients across the state. ABC's Ina Silicotera has more. Overnight, a new warning. We need to really be um, socially responsible when we go outside, socially distance. You know, I think there's evidence that we're not doing that. The nation's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, comparing the pandemic to his worst nightmare, telling Yahoo News. In a period of four months, it has devastated the world and it isn't over yet. 21 states and Puerto Rico registering a rise in COVID-19 cases and 14 states, including Arizona, have seen their highest seven day average growth since the pandemic began. Those growth numbers could be attributed to more testing, but several states are also seeing an uptick in hospitalizations. If we continue at a, at, at a rate like this, we're facing a significant chance that we're going to have to shut down the state again. Hospitalizations are on the rise in these eight states. Doctors say the increases are related to reopening and a lack of social distancing. In Texas alone, hospitalizations are up 36 percent since Memorial Day. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization clarifying its statement on asymptomatic spread, saying it's very rare for people who tested positive but never developed symptoms to infect others. This does not refer to pre-symptomatic patients who just haven't shown signs yet. Members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force have also warned of a possible spike in infections due to the recent nationwide protests. And some members of the D.C. National Guard have already tested positive for COVID-19 in the wake of the mass protests across the nation's capital last week. Inez De La Quatera, ABC News, Washington. Metro Health is responding to conflicting information from the World Health Organization on, on the asymptomatic spread of COVID-19. On Monday, an official with the WHO suggested that asymptomatic people rarely spread the virus. The WHO official clarified her statement Tuesday and said it was referring to very few studies. San Antonio Metro Health's director talked to us about their plans in dealing with cases without symptoms in our community. We haven't changed our position on asymptomatic, which is that we don't know what the prevalence is in our community. That's why we are doing that door-to-door -door random study. And um, we'll continue to proceed that with that direction and those assumptions, um, regardless of the WHO statement. Bear County has classified 701 of its COVID-19 cases as asymptomatic. Well, several cooling centers around town will be open today because of the pandemic. Here's a list of the centers that will be open. These libraries will be open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. through Saturday. The city says those seeking relief from the heat will be allowed to sit in designated areas and use Wi-Fi on their own devices, but computer use will still not be available. More cooling centers will open next week. We have a full schedule right now on KSAT.com. Right now it's 11 minutes past the hour, 75 degrees. Still to come, the FCC is proposing a record-setting fine against telemarketers making robocalls. That's ahead in your morning consumer news. More than 30 million adults in the U.S. cannot read, write, or do basic math. After the break, we'll meet a woman who came up with the first of its kind idea to combat illiteracy. Taking a look outside with live cam at 75 degrees and the sun is starting to peek through. Mm -hmm. And it is nice and not humid outside. Mike will let you know about that in just a bit. After graduating from law school, raising $30 million in venture capital and often being one of the very few women in the boardroom, H.C. Warfield is taking on a new challenge. And what she is calling her biggest accomplishment yet is designed to help others succeed. Our Max Massey has more on Warfield's fighting illiteracy. For the year 2050, I believe that we'll be 
change. When adult learner H.C. Warfield retired, he decided to go back to school, learn something he never was able to do before. When I came here, I couldn't read at all. Warfield is one of thousands of adults and children learners who benefit from a first-of-its-kind literacy collaboration called Chicago Literacy Alliance. My reading is getting um, really good. I hope people... Like having a great big extended professional family in one place, like a great big nonprofit family reunion for literacy. With her experience in the venture capital world, Ratner uses her expertise to build support for the idea that if literacy groups work together, their reach can be vast. No one is going to be motivated or inspired or drawn to a group which is just doing a few little projects in isolation. Instead, Chicago Literacy Alliance has a home base where more than 120 literacy groups can rent workspaces, use resources, and collaborate with one another. Christine Kenny is the executive director of Literacy works, which trains more than 600 volunteer tutors for adult learners. Being close to other organizations working towards the same mission has been a huge advantage for her. Find out more about what they're doing, see if there's ways to partner. And for people who are learning to read for the first time, this collaboration for literacy? Oh, it gonna mean a whole lot. Not only to him, but also to the millions of people struggling with illiteracy. The Chicago Literacy Alliance started with only 17 groups, but they've grown to more than 120. And They've been so successful, they earned the Best Practice Award from the Library of Congress. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Moving on, 617, 75 degrees. We're going to check in with Officer Nick Solis with traffic. It looks pretty green out there. Yeah, a lot of green on the screen. It's looking good right now. And If you're on the way to work, you got time to make a lot of decisions. You can put some gas, get some food, because things are smooth. No accidents to report, which is always good. Let's take a look at the trans guy. 35 and 37 was looking good. 35 and 410, very light traffic, not bad at all. 35 and 37, another angle looking good. And what else we got here? 35 and 1604, it's light. That's not as bad as it can get. Things are looking good right now. Thank you, Nick. Noticing some of those pictures, we still have some clouds hanging around here. And there's a shake to many of these cameras around the metro area. Yeah, I think some may be a little vibration, but there is a, a decent breeze out there mm -hmm. this morning. And we've seen some wind gusts already uh, earlier this morning, up around 30 miles per hour around New Braunfels. Beautiful picture from yesterday. So yesterday it was humid with all capital letters and again you know a lot of people say well it doesn't matter if it's dry here well it, it actually does because comparing late afternoon temperatures san antonio to del rio we are at 98 degrees del rio was at 105 the dew point the measure of moisture in the atmosphere which we always like to show it was 74 here in town but it was only 35 in del rio so we had 46 percent humidity 46 doesn't sound that bad but you got to look at that number. Del Rio had 8% humidity. So when it all said and done, what it actually felt like was 105, felt like the actual temperature in Del Rio, but it was 111 is what it felt like here in town. And the difference being, you can cool yourself much more efficiently as you the perspiration would evaporate much more easily in Del Rio than it would here in town. So that's why that humidity makes all the difference. And we've got lower humidity out there right now. Still, like I said, some clouds hanging around here. 75, we've dropped down about three degrees in the past hour and then 60s in parts of the hill country and temperatures will continue to drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours. And these dew points have dropped down significantly because even this morning, a lot of areas were still well up into the 70s. So uh, I came into work and it was yeah, on the humid side and then that uh, humidity continued to drop down and that's going to continue to be the case around Victoria which has already dropped down significantly uh, Beeville as well as Catula you'll see this drier air moving on in here throughout the day wind is out of the north uh, east north to northeast at about 10 15 20 miles per hour and there are a couple of gusts out there 24 in Pleasanton 21 right now in Rock Springs we still obviously have some of those clouds as you saw on the uh, live cam pictures as well as trans guide that will get pushed on out of here. So we will see this drier air, this darker shade of gray out here to the west move on in here. So we will have blue skies later on today. And of course, been saying all along the icing on the cake is the fact that the dry air is going to stick around through the rest of the week tomorrow, Friday, as well as the weekend as the front moved on through the area. You can kind of see the line right about there or as this loops on through. It did produce a couple of showers, even a couple of uh, thunderstorms. Now, upstream from us, there's nothing going on. So this is what's in store for the next couple of days. Now, not to 
not to be Debbie Downer about this, but uh, we don't have any rain in the forecast either. So you're going to have to water your plants, water your yard because it's going to stay dry all the way through. At least it looks like about the middle of next week. 85 degrees today at noon, sunny skies. And then later on today, high temperature right about where it should be. 93 normal high is 92 and low humidity. So really comfortable tomorrow. Mid 60s starting off. Oh, that's going to be nice. Same thing. Friday morning, uh, mid upper 60s over the weekend and then mid 90s in the afternoon. So yeah, seasonably hot or even a little bit above normal, but with the low humidity, it's going to be very, very comfortable this weekend. Thank you very much, Mike. Right now we're 621, 75 degrees and we'll be right back. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. These are real people, not actors, who've got their eczema under control. With less eczema, you can show more skin. So roll up those sleeves and help heal your skin from within with Dupixent. Dupixent is the first treatment of its kind that continuously treats moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis, even between flare-ups. Dupixent is a biologic and not a cream or steroid. Many people taking Dupixent saw clear or almost clear skin and had significantly less itch. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. So help heal your skin from within and talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixent. If your financial situation has changed, we may be able to help. Now to consumer news, the telemarketers may soon have to pay up. The government seeking a record $225 million in fines from health insurance telemarketers accused of making a billion robocalls in violation of FCC rules. Case centers around a company accused of scamming people in at least eight states. Honda says it had to stop production worldwide after a cyber attack. A virus infiltrated its servers and workers couldn't access their laptops. Experts warn companies are especially vulnerable now to hacking with so many people working from home. Check it out. Most expensive car ever sold through an online only auction. The 2003 Ferrari Enzo went for more than $2.6 million. The car's original price when it was built, $650,000. 625, 75 degrees. The brother of George Floyd is heading to the nation's capital today. Deta details on hearing on the hearing he's set to be part of coming up in the next half hour. And Transkai, we'll check back in with Nick, see how things are looking. The sun is up. It is breezy out there. We'll check in with both Mike and Nick coming up after this break. This calm, peaceful park was the end of a pretty tense situation for San Antonio police. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you exactly what happened. And if you're just now waking up, it is breezy out there and feels a little bit different than the last couple of mornings. Mike Ostrich is standing by with more. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, June 10th. Thank you so much for joining us. And it is a beautiful morning out there compared to what we've been dealing with for the humidity. Yep. That's right, Ben. First, we're going to check in with Nick, get a quick preview of how Time Saver traffic is looking. No, things are looking good out there. You got time to stop for a donut if you want to. Really? Ooh. Yeah. Is that recommended? Eclair. <laughs> <laughs> References. Don't forget your friends either. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. It is gorgeous this morning. Uh, some folks down at the south are still seeing some high humidity because that front was taking its time to move on through here. It was actually about uh, say over the course of about two, three, four o'clock this morning as it moved on through the metropolitan area and now down to the south. Cameras moving a little bit because yep, uh, we do have a, a decent little breeze. 65 right now in Kerrville, 75 in town, 76 tenths, and I think we dropped down a few more degrees this morning. And there's. Well, you sure can make this a uh, try line out, if you will, uh, with dew point temperatures that drop about 30 to 35 degrees as this moves on through. So it was funny at one point uh, the 
dryer air had moved into the airport. Dew point was 43. Randolph still had a dew point up to 77. That was about uh, 3 o'clock this morning. But obviously, dry air continues on in here in these northeasterly winds. And we do have some uh, gusts out there. 24 at Pleasanton, 21 at Rock Springs. It'll be breezier this morning, and the wind is going to ease up later on this afternoon. Mold and grass, pigweed are all on the low side. And partly cloudy, breezy again this morning. Sunny, not too hot. Normal high temperature, low 90s, low humidity. That's the best part about it. Well, and then add to that and so on tomorrow and so forth and so on all the way through the weekend. Same weather, nice, pleasant mornings, low humidity and uh, seasonally warm in the afternoon, but nice to be in the shade. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. And once again, time saver traffic. Boy, I don't really see much going on on the map right now. Yeah, you're going to save some time today. Things are looking really good right now, Mike. Uh, if you are on the way to work, expect a smooth ride out there. And I don't mean to sound repetitive, but it's looking great right now. No accidents to report, nothing on the highways, so that's always good. Look at these drive times. From the city of New Brumples to 1604, it's a 15-minute ride. And if you're 35 southbound, continuing from 1604 to downtown, 11 minutes. So really good times there. All right, let's look, look outside. 410 at Callahan. Look at that, how smooth that's going really good. Uh, 10 at Callahan East is looking really good there. Um, just great traffic all around the city. 10 uh, inbounds and outbounds at Frio looking good. Uh, very smooth and 10 West at Loop 1604 on the northwest side looking great. Well, everyone, please have a safe commute to work. Remember to go that speed limit, wear your seatbelt and be safe. Mark, Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Nick. San Antonio police say it wasn't easy, but they have caught up with a northwest side man who was on the run armed with a shotgun. They had to fight through thick brush and darkness to track him down. Our Katrina Weber is live at the trailhead to the Leon Creek Greenway, not far from Bandera Road. Katrina, you mentioned that police thought they had heard gunfire. Do they know if that man ever sh fired any shots? That is a question that they were not able to answer right away. They said that it, it, it did sound like gunshots, but then they said it could have been anything. It could have been a door slamming. Either way, police were concerned because they say that man who was armed with a shotgun also was in the middle of some sort of a mental episode. Now, let me show you how this started out around 4 o'clock this morning. Police had gotten a call to a home on Marshall Pass. The man's mother told them she was concerned about her son, that he appeared to be having mental problems, and that he had taken off with this shotgun in hand. Police circled the neighborhood. They were looking for him there at first, but then they established contact with him on a cell phone and found out he was actually along the Greenway here at, along Leon Creek. Uh, police sent up their helicopter. They say that uh, they talked the man into putting down his shotgun and also using his cell phone flashlight to signal to the helicopter where he was. Officers then went in there negotiating through all of the brush and the darkness to actually get to the man. They brought him out safely, uh, had him checked out here by paramedics and took him into custody. And police tell us they will be taking him to get a mental evaluation. Uh, it doesn't look like he will be facing any charges at this point. Reporting live from the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Just hours after the celebration of George Floyd's life, there's new hope that Lasting and meaningful change will be possible. Lawmakers from Capitol Hill to cities, halls across the country, considering ways to reform police procedures. And in cities around the world, demonstrators are knocking down statues they say are monuments to racism. ABC's Ina Silicotera has the details. This morning, a statue of Christopher Columbus sitting at the bottom of a lake. As George Floyd's death sparks a new movement, the removal of what some say are symbols of racism. A crowd in Richmond, Virginia, knocking the statue down, dragging it from a park and throwing it into the water. Nearby, a stalemate over this monument to Robert E. Lee. The governor wants it gone, but a judge has now issued an injunction against its removal. And NASCAR driver Bubba Wallace now calling for Confederate flags to be removed from racetracks. No one should feel uncomfortable when they when they come to a NASCAR race. So it starts with Confederate flags. Get them out of here. They have no place for them. It follows an emotional final farewell for George Floyd Tuesday. I believe, I believe that a change is going to come. Friends, family members, politicians, and celebrities packing a church in Houston. I want justice for my brother. My big brother. His death in police custody in Minneapolis is sparking a global outcry over police brutality and racial prejudice. 
Just hours after the funeral, the district attorney's office announced it's dropping charges against nearly 800 protesters in Houston. On Capitol Hill, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell asking Tim Scott, the chamber's only black Republican, to draft a police reform bill. I've asked Senator Tim Scott to lead a group that is working on a proposal to allow us to respond uh, to the obvious uh, racial discrimination that we've seen on full display on our television screens over the last two weeks. And when it comes to the Confederate flag, another development this morning, the U.S. Navy is now planning to ban the flag from all public spaces on ships and aircraft. Inez de Liquitera, ABC News, Washington. And Floyd's brother will be testifying on Capitol Hill today. He will be speaking before a House Judiciary Committee hearing on pol pol policing practices and law enforcement accountability. Last week, he spoke with both President Donald Trump and former Vice President Joe Biden. Several other witnesses will also testify during the hearing, including the sister of a slain officer. For the first time, an African-American man is a service chief in the U.S. military. The Senate unanimously confirmed General Charles Brown Jr. Tuesday as chief of staff of the United States Air Force. General Brown, also a San Antonio native, in lieu of recent events, he said his nomination provides hope, but also comes with a heavy burden. He says he will, quote, work to make improvements personally, professionally, and institutionally so that all airmen, both today and tomorrow, appreciate the value of diversity, end quote. Well, the CEO of Twitter is adding another holiday for the company. Juneteenth will now be a company holiday. The new policy will also apply to Square. Juneteenth is June 19th. The day commemorates the freeing of slaves in Texas in 1865. The decision comes as protests take place across the country, sparked by the death of George Floyd. The company's CEO called Juneteenth a day of celebration, education, and connection. U.S. government is launching a pilot program to help reduce the availability of unapproved opioids online. The Food and Drug Administration and the National Telecommunications and Information Administration working with several internet registries. So this is how the program works. FDA sends a warning letter to websites that are selling illicit opioids online. If the agency doesn't get a response back in the required time frame, they will inform participating internet registries who will then review and assess whether to take further action including possible to name name suspensions or blocks program lasts 120 days at the end the agencies will look at whether it's helped curb the illegal sale of opioids online 638 75 degrees well new technology is helping law enforcement solve cold cases right here in san antonio after the break what they are using to help solve a murder case that is 30 years old There are dozens of cold cases in San Antonio. One of those is a 1990 murder of 35-year-old Antoinette Jordan. Erica Hernandez tells us how police are now hoping new technology can help solve this crime. She was a mother of eight kids who was brutally raped and murdered on May 26, 1990. Antoinette Jordan was found under the North Walter Street Bridge by a passerby walking and noticed her lying face up under the bridge. Police say she was shot and the disarray of her clothing suggested sexual assault. The investigation by police suggests that robbery was not a motive. Jordan's jewelry and personal items had not been taken, but police did say they believe she may have known her killer. That was Eric Hernandez reporting with no witnesses to the case. Uh, it went cold, but new technology is giving police hope. Evidence found at the scene is being reanalyzed and has been sent to a lab. We reached out to SAPD about the status of that evidence and have not heard back yet. If you have any information that could help police solve this case, please call SAPD cold case tip line at 210-207-7401 or Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Well, KSAT and our community partners are teaming up with the nonprofit Youth Q to help fundraise for the San Antonio Food Bank. Every dollar donated to the food bank can provide seven meals for those in need. To donate, you can head to KSAT.com and search community and be sure to tune in on June 13th and 14th for performance from the San Antonio Youth Chorale, which works with Youth Q. 
Well, Coach Pop might not be on the sidelines when the NBA season resumes July 31st. NBA Commissioner Adam Silder says coaches who are 65 or older may not be allowed with their teams on the sidelines. That's because the CDC says people in that age bracket are more susceptible to the coronavirus. Coach Pop is 71. Spurs General Manager Brian Wright addressed whether that would be a competitive disadvantage for our Spurs. All of that is still TBD on, on how that all plays out. Um, you know, the league is still working uh, with the Players Association on a lot of different things um, on the rules that will govern, you know, how we function during that time period to complete the season. So um, I don't want to speculate and, you know, we'll wait from, for guidance on the league on, on how we'll move forward. Um, but obviously, um, yeah, you would like your complete group there, but I think the league has made it clear from the beginning that the health and safety for everybody is a priority. Mr. Silver has already walked back some comments saying there are some cases where coaches in their 60s and 70s could be healthier than those in their 30s and 40s. We want to tell you about some very special animals at the San Antonio Humane Society. Here's a look at Vanessa. Oh, she's precious. She's a one-year-old Chinese Sharpay mix. This sweet girl is very shy at first, but once she knows you want to be her friend, she will start bouncing up and down. Her tail will go 1,000 miles an hour, so watch out. <laughs> and here's Goldie, a one-year-old kitty cat. She's the only cat they know of that can play fetch. Mm. She loves her kitty toys and sunbathing. Came to the shelter with kittens, but her kittens have all been adopted. And now she is looking for a loving forever home. And don't forget that Swiffer and North Shore Animal League of America are partnering with the Humane Society to offer adoption specials. Now through Sunday, Swiffer will cover $50 of the adoption fees for 50 approved adopters. To learn more, just go to their website, sahumane.org. Let's get in the fast lane for the latest on traffic with Officer Nick Solis. And pretty fast out there because there's not a lot of accidents. Yeah, exactly. It's smooth out there right now. If you're heading to work, expect a smooth ride. Things are looking good. Uh, that's the best we can ask for on this wonderful Wednesday. Look outside. 37 and 10 looking good. 281 and 410 looking even better. Uh, you always like to see those cars flowing like that. 35 and Ben Zingelman, that's looking just as good there. We had a little problem earlier, but now it's flowing smoothly. 35 and 37 another angle looking great um, and uh, 35 and 410 looking amazing amazing <laughs> also yes. amazing that picture mike and once again i'm getting the, it's the windmill that the gets windmill. you it's the windmills it that get me i photo. love those windmill pictures and that's absolutely gorgeous out there and a couple of clouds in front of the sun but it just adds that little bit of reminds me of the South moon in star wars quality the moon in Star Wars. The moon in Star Wars at the end. Kind of. There's another moon in that picture. Are you talking about like Luke Skywalker's home planet kind of yeah. thing? Yeah. Ah, okay. All right. you, was that two moons or two suns? I think, I don't two know. Two suns. It was two suns, I think. So. I believe that's right. We'll get that. Before figured. we get a bunch of email, two <laughs> know, suns <laughs> on Tatooine. <laughs> we all Tatooine. We should have known about Star Wars. Anyway, notice how the camera's uh, kind of quivering a little bit there because we do have a, a decent breeze. Mid 60s Hill Country, 72 Bulverde, 75 here in town, and uh, upper 70s down to the south. Humidity is finally dropping down. Now, this is continuing to work its way down to the south. Catula, you were up in the uh, 70s. It's now dropped into the 60s. Now, still humid, but uh, even at 80 in Beville, that will eventually be going away as this continues to work its way down here to the uh, south. That front does. Winds out of the north to northeast at about 10, 15, close to 20 miles per hour. We've got a couple of wind gusts out there. 23 right now, Pleasanton. 30 in Catula. And the nice thing is dew points and obviously that's how you figure factor in relative humidity. That's going to be uh, staying on the low side. So it's going to be comfortable. We're going to have nice, pleasant mornings, nice afternoons, plenty of sunshine, seasonally warm temperatures, but get in the shade and it's going to be comfortable as the front has been moving on through. Did touch off a couple of showers, uh, a few thunderstorms here. There were even a, a decent couple of thunderstorms there in Frio County that all moved down to the south and will continue to work its way down to the south. Upstream for us, nothing is going on. The uh, kind of gee whiz, you can see that giant low up there on the Great Lakes. That's the leftovers of what was Tropical Storm uh, Cristobal just a few days ago and moved on shore. Now, as far as our weather is concerned, upper level winds, we've got kind of this uh, almost a northwesterly flow in the atmosphere. So that's what pulls in some beautiful weather. That's going to be sticking around for the next couple of days. The ridge of high pressure will start to build in. Um, yes, like I said, we will be seasonably warm, but the humidity through the weekend is going to be staying on the low side. Now, it's not going to last forever. Humidity will start to return by probably about the middle of next week, but that high is going to remain in control. On the downside, though, 
no rain chances in the forecast all the way through right now about uh, about the middle of next week. Yes, we've had plenty up to this point, but we could still use more and there's like I said, nothing. It's a very dry forecast. 85 degrees today at noon, sunny skies. We'll have a few of these clouds left over here and there and then 93 for a high temperature today. With plenty of sunshine windier this morning than the wind is going to ease up later on this afternoon. Low humidity, so it's going to be really comfortable. Mid 60s starting off tomorrow, Friday morning as well up into the low to mid 90s. Just fantastic. Great looking weekend. Sunshine out there and pleasant humidity. Humidity, like I said, will start to come back by the middle of next week. We can handle this. Definitely. Yeah, a nice, nice stretch of weather. About 10 till right now, 75 degrees. You're watching GMSA. Well, as many of us may have experienced, the pandemic has hurt the economy. Despite recent stock market gains, the country still faces a 13% unemployment rate. Tomorrow on GMSA, where we look at the ways you can get out of the employment line and back to work. We're going to put to live cam to work. A uh, breezy start to our midweek day. The news you need to know before you go is coming up. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, we are live in Houston after that emotional funeral for George Floyd. Hundreds packing the church to celebrate his life. But this is all happening as the calls for police reform grow louder. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, a supporter of defunding the police, is live with us only here on GMA. Looking for a gunman along a green belt. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. That was the situation that San Antonio police faced here this morning in the dark. Things did end peacefully here though, along the Leon Creek Greenway. Now let me show you how things looked earlier though. They were pretty tense in a nearby neighborhood. Police say a woman called them around four this morning saying she was worried about her son who seemed to be having mental problems. When police arrived at their home on Marshall Pass, they found out the son had taken off with a shotgun gun in hand. Officers were able to reach him by phone and found out he was on the greenway here. They say he appeared to be having a mental crisis even at that time. The police eventually were able to convince him to put down the shotgun. They had to have him use a cell phone flashlight to signal to their helicopter so they could find him. And then officers negotiated through the dark to get him and take him into custody. They say this man is a military veteran and he will be taken in to have a mental evaluation. Reporting from the northwest side, Katrina Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And this morning, police are investigating a shooting on our city's northeast side. Police say this happened around 11 last night in the 5600 block of Round Table near Mid Crown and Walsham. That's down the street from Ed White Middle School. They say a man in his 20s was walking up to his grandparents' home. That's when someone in a gray vehicle pulled up and someone with a weapon jumped out of the passenger seat. The suspect shot the man in the leg. Victim pulled out a gun and fired back, likely hitting the gunman. They are still searching for the driver and the shooter. Well, at 655 and 75 degrees, we're going to check in with Officer Nick Solis. How are our drive times looking? It's looking good. Everything's looking great right now, Sarah. Thanks for asking. All right, just just remind you, make sure you wear your seatbelt, go to a safe distance and just get to work safe. Things are looking smooth right now if you are heading to work. Mike, it's nice outside. Yeah. As it feels really nice out there. Notice how we do still have some clouds hanging around here and this camera is well, it is still shaking just a little bit because we've got a decent breeze. We've dropped down to 74 right now, and I do think we will uh, continue to drop down into the, the low 70s before we begin the warming process. Got some low 60s out in portions of the hill country, and the wind is out of the north to northeast in many locations, about 10, 15, 20 miles per hour, a bit gusty at times. If you're not seeing drier air yet, that should continue to work its way down to the south. 85 at noon today, 93 for high temperature, sunny skies, wind will ease up a little bit. Low humidity, it's going to be really, really nice. And I think the best part about it, the whole thing is it's going to last all the way through the rest of the week and on into the weekend. Pleasant mornings, below normal temperatures, sunshine, mid 90s in the afternoon. Not a bad pattern. Open up the windows. Yeah, Mike, Nick, thank you guys. I'll take that weather. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you back here at GMSA at 9. Have a great day. Good morning, America is next.